Welcome back. We were talking about uh, a lot of things, and and came the name, came up the name technocracy. Uh, this is a slang usually from Tetulia to techno from one end to the other. See, and right, this this discussion is going from one end to another to techno to the Rohingya situation. Bangladesh and Myanmar recently, I think about 24 hours ago, they signed an MOU. Uh, hoping that the repatriation of the unfortunate Rohingyans who are, uh, who are, who are now in, in Bangladesh uh, will be repatriated within, or repatriation will start after two months. How do you see this? Uh, first of all, let me uh, rephrase one thing. You know, by calling them refugees or Rohingyas, that itself uh, segregates them from the normal society. Right. So, so we should call them Burmese. Myanmar people, that is, we should be calling them Myanmar yes. nationals right. who have been displaced. Right. Right. So there uh, definitely means it is something um, we are looking forward, we were looking forward to, the MOU. Um, but then again, people need to understand what the situation in Bangladesh is. Mm -hmm. And more so, the history be behind uh, the people in the Rakhine state, the Muslim population itself. You know, this uh, tug of war has been going on since 82, later on 92, and they're signing the treaty in 92 under those treaties. And they, in, they, you know, they, they have, have not, not abide, abide by it, they have not. And it is merely, and I would have to definitely uh, say it from a humanitarian ground, and we are all humans and we have to show our humane side of it, that it is an appalling atrocity and ethnic cleansing which has mm -hmm, happened. Mm -hmm. The world has just uh, shut its eyes. And it is Bangladesh being the neighbor, you know, under the leadership of Sheikh Hasina, that do, to do show you, its humanity and Do you think that the world in. has shut uh, their eyes or have we not been able to show it to them? No, I mean, obviously I'm in, I'm in London, I guess I would have to uh, comment on the uh, UK government for putting pressure yep. um, and the European Union to come forth first uh, and you know be vocal uh, against the atrocities definitely well, a lot but of then people again it is we should have done so much more so many yeah. days before yeah, it yeah, just yeah, a lot of people that's what I was uh, pointing out here a lot of people feel that the Bangladesh foreign policy foreign uh, ministries activities have not been really robust and rather aggressive because you remember going back to 1971, I mean, I'm not sure that you were not born then, but uh, uh, the the Indian Prime Minister went uh, and visited 21 capitals, you see, yes. to generate uh, an opinion, see, move the, the, the idea. Uh, have we not, have we done something or have we failed to understand? Uh, you said so, that we should have done that. No, uh, let me uh, tell this thing on record, I guess. Um, I, as a member of parliament, representing the Bangladesh parliament, I guess, and the people, uh, I feel that the foreign affairs ministry has run, done a tremendous job mm -hmm. because we have gone door to door, the foreign, uh, foreign uh, affairs ministry with the members and the other agencies, we have gone door to door in seeking the rightful action by different other countries. And as such, as of but late... Our, but our next door neighbor has not well, supported Well, India us. has actually said and has uh, made its... While the atrocities point. were being conducted, I mean, carried on, the, uh, Mr. Modi was in Burma negotiating a business deal. Well, it was, yes, it was. But uh, at the same time, uh, there... So, so has, you say the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has done its job very well, as you see. To us, living abroad, we think that probably the job was not done very well. Well, uh, it takes time, you see. Every uh, country has its uh, foreign policies. Uh, Bangladesh has a policy of uh, friendship with everyone and uh, enemy to none. So this is the no, foreign that, that, policy. That's very good. Uh, I mean, but uh, then again, we but pursued. We, we want our friends to be friendly to us. Absolutely. It. And yes, the Indian government, uh, um, the foreign secretary of India has actually initially gave a statement uh, 
asking the Myanmar government to stop all the atrocities. And they have also signed the agreement as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the petition has been moved in the UN. Mm -hmm. uh, they have also signed in favor of moving. Um, Some 153 countries? Yes, it has already been. Now it will go, it will go to the General Assembly. Right. So yes, they are on board. But uh, yes, uh, it takes time, you know. Everyone has its own foreign policies. Uh, we, being um, the country closest to Myanmar, we have accommodated um, so and, far. And closest to India. And closest to India, yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, obviously, means you have to understand it takes time to negotiate. Uh, foreign policies, foreign negotiation, it is not a matter of seconds. It takes time. And every uh, foreign policy is very different from one another. And they no, have vest, no, vested no. interests, I guess. But so this is, this is a, an old of, uh, problem, you see. 82 you mentioned, 92 you mentioned, and this is 2017. Yes. It started in, even, even last year, 2016, I think sometime October or, or, or November, sometime, you see. Because I remember to have written something on my status on Facebook see, about that. Even, even, even I, w I went live on Facebook about this. Now, this is something that should have been one of the most important or probably the on, the, on the top of the, the problems that to be solved or to be looked up after by the foreign ministry. This is something on our border. But we, it seemed that we were not aware of it no, suddenly. We were aware, aware of it, but unfortunately the problem is that we have a very unprotected boundary, you know, the borders itself. It's a very open border, you know, people are crossing uh, not only on boats, but they can only w even walk, walk this. from one uh, border to the other. Uh, on the other hand, India has a uh, fencing on their borders, so obviously it limits people Al from going. Also, on, they have fencings also on Bangladesh border. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Fencing is very necessary. I think in the near future, we would also have to look into fencing because this is a major problem. Uh, we have to look into of our own safety in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. But right now, uh, the most important thing is that, you know, we as Bengalis has received uh, hu humanitarian aid and the assistance in 1971. India right, has taken right. on board so many people at that time. How right. can we let uh, these Myanmar displaced people, uh, let them be in this fashion and not take yep, them in? Yep, yep. So we we took our, our time, though. Yeah, so we well, took our time. Yeah, we took our time. We negotiated. <laughs> but at the same time, we have taken on board over, over right, 600,000. That's very really good. Now. That's very really good that we have. See, now, going back to the same uh, MOU between Bangladesh and Myanmar, see, uh, this idea that repatriation uh, of these uh, refugees from Myanmar will be starting after two months. Uh, do you think that this is a, a realistic approach? I personally, I f absolutely from a personal view, I do not think this is a realistic target because uh, in order for this to happen, we need to abide by the Kofi Annan report and which is a five point uh, mm -hmm. steps which the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has mentioned in the uh, UN Assembly. Mm -hmm. So yes, rehabilitation must be there. The environment should be there to protect True. its That's own very citizens. Important. That's very important. Otherwise, uh, how could we force uh, a huge population to go back and face again atrocities? There, there really has to cannot. be housing for them. There have to be the, the, the other uh, like schools, uh, hospitals, colleges. Absolutely. And, and it's nothing is there anymore. They don't have any house, they don't have anything whatsoever. The Myanmar government is saying that you need to show a proof of identity. If I, my house is being burnt, <laughs> if my family is being killed, I'm not going to look for my identity and yeah, I'm going to take it. You'd like leave. to run away first. I will it? run away first. So these are uh, things that really uh, are, are not acceptable. But at the same time, the international community I always say this is a this is a global community that we right, have. The international community. In, in your opinion, in your opinion, how best steps. Bangladesh can tackle this? I mean, we have come to this stage. Mm -hmm. This now a negotiating stage now. See, most of the part is over. You see, we, we have looked after them and all. Now, thinking of sending them back to a safe haven. How That's would you? I think it, Bangladesh cannot lead this alone. Alone, mm -hmm. you know, like every other. Uh, crises go globally. You have you talk about Mali, you talk about Ivory Coast, you talk right, about see. Senegal, you talk about all those international crises wherever it's happened. The UN has stepped in. Right. It is the UN commissioned 
uh, authorization body who right. has looked after the rehabilitation and peaceful uh, settlement of its citizens. It is UN who has to take lead in this. Right. Bangladesh, we as a strong partner of the UN and having the biggest uh, um, supplier and I think contributor in terms of the UN force itself, we can only contribute and be very strong in terms of our principles in following our foreign policies. Well, if you can impose peace in other countries, why not? Absolutely. On your border. Absolutely. We are leading. <laughs> why not? Obviously. Uh, you were talking about e-commerce and industry and all that, and that's very good. But I think yesterday your government has increased the price of electricity by 5.3 percent. Yes. Whereas the price of petrol has hit the bottom, almost the bottom. Global. So globally, yes. Absolutely. So how do you see that? I mean, it's going to have a knock-on effect on everything, even the bus driver will just start charging more money. See, uh, the diesel will cost more. I'll, I'll give you a, an example, right? Um, even 10 years back, China was the, and still is We're the biggest. We're almost at the end of the program, yes. Uh, is the biggest supplier of garments. But uh, Bangladesh is the second largest because China cannot execute the low cost uh, products because their uh, per capita income has grown. Right. right. Now, Bangladesh's capital per capita income has gone from 600 to now 1400 and 1600 plus. Right. right. Now, in order for us to have a stable supply of energy, which is the fundamental requirement for any developing countries, by 2018 June, we will hopefully, in plan in action, I guess, will be able to meet 100% uh, electricity demand. Now, Increasing as such, you need investment. Mm -hmm. You need to increase the price of electricity. In global context, we are of one of the lowest. And in terms of what you're talking about, in terms of fossil fuel, petrol, the global indicators, they fluctuate. We do not want a fluctuation. We want to have a stable price. So we have kept our price steady. On the By increasing it? No, no, we haven't increased the price of petrol. We have increased the price of electricity. Right, yes. Not the petrol. Even though if OPEC reduces the price of petrol globally... Okay, sir, we, we have cannot. come to the end of the program. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And on that very, me. very positive note, we depart and hope to meet you again sometime. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed the show as, much as we have. And next time, we'll have another distinguished guest. Same time, same channel. See you next, next week. Thank you for being with us. See you.